if you want to ask, is ag agriculture, present day world agriculture succeeding, just look at what, what actually comes in its wake, what it actually falls short of, and the collateral damage. About, according to the United Nations, about a billion people in the world right now, that's about one in seven, one in seven and a half, are chronically undernourished, and another billion are chronically overnourished, and the world population of diabetics, which is overnourishment basically of the wrong things, is bigger than the total population of the United States, more than twice the population of Russia. And the damage we are doing to the biosphere, while not in fact managing to feed ourselves very well, is enormous. We're in the midst of a mass extinction, as ecologists agree, and the greatest single cause of that is, when you boil it down, modern industrial agriculture. Absolute disaster we're creating for ourselves, and agriculture is at the heart of it, and yet agriculture could solve all our problems. But governments like ours, who work in combination with the corporates, who are, I work in combination with the financiers, who in turn are supported by increasing sections of academe, who are dependent increasingly on the corporates for their sustenance, and indeed organized crime, which plays a much bigger part in the world's affairs than most of us care to admit. All of these are leading us in totally the wrong direction, including, I might say, and especially our ludicrous governments, which we've endured for the last, well, forever really, who very rarely have taken agriculture seriously. It is also that we need to change agriculture around, absolutely, but it's also obvious from everything that's been said this morning, among other things, that we cannot change agriculture ad hoc. We need to change everything else, including the economy, including the sort of moral basis of where we're coming from, including our attitude to the biosphere, if we're going to change agriculture. In other words, we need a cross-the-board rethink which I think amounts to nothing less than a renaissance, which I think is bigger in scope than the renaissance of the 15th century, roughly the 15th, which put an end more or less to the Middle Ages, bigger in scope, and deals with the minutiae of life, including the economy and including agriculture in a way that the original renaissance didn't. But leading the renaissance that we need is agriculture itself. In other words, we need an agrarian renaissance. Now, we could, this is the point, we could very easily feed everybody in the world to a very high standard, the highest standards of nutrition, the highest standards of gastronomy, and we could do that without cruelty, and we could do that without injustice, and we could do that without wrecking the rest of the world, if only that was what we were actually setting out to do. It's all a question of intent. And I have came up with this expression a few years ago about, of enlightened agriculture, otherwise known as real farming, which we apply to the Oxford Real Farming Conference. But enlightened agriculture is simply defined loosely, but adequately as agriculture that is expressly designed to provide everybody in the world with good food, without injustice, without cruelty, and without wrecking the rest. And the point is that that is eminently possible. It's actually almost easy. And the key to uh, enlightened agriculture lies with four very big ideas. I think the idea of enlightened agriculture, I will, I will lay claim to the phrase, but the four big ideas that feed into it are certainly not mine, but they come from all over the world as big ideas do. And the first of the very big ideas is agroecology. We have to treat farms as individual farms, as ecosystems. And uh, agriculture as a whole, as a positively contributor, co contributor to the biosphere. And in passing, let me put in a word for the, wor a word for the word biosphere. We should drop the word environment. The word environment should be placed on the index expurgatorius. Because environment simply means surroundings. And in this modern world, surrounding simply means stage scenery. And stage scenery simply means real estate. When George W. Bush talked about the environment, he talked about places where he could go and shoot bears. That's not 
what we should be thinking about. The biosphere means the living world, and we must see ourselves as part of the living world, because if we don't, the living world is sunk, and we are sunk with it. And also because our assaults upon the, uh, the biosphere should be seen not simply as a crime, but as a sin. In other words, as, as an offence against nature itself. Anyway, agroecology is the first of the key four key ideas. The second of the four key ideas is the idea of food sovereignty that everybody in the world, or every community certainly, should have control over their own food supply. And of course, the whole idea of the local economy, the kinds of things that Helena was talking about, that we've just been hearing about, absolutely crucial to the idea of food sovereignty. The third of the big ideas is, just to underline that, economic democracy, which includes the idea that the economy must be more egalitarian than it is. We have to be heading for a more... Neoliberalism, which now prevails, is actually creating inequality, which is at the root of unhappiness and is a hugely destructive force in agriculture. We need what I'm calling the tripartite mixed economy combination of government ownership, community ownership, and private ownership, but above all, actually, community ownership. We need, um, what's the third ingredient? Yes, um, respect for local knowledge, for traditional knowledge and practice. At the moment, we're developing technologies at a huge rate, GMOs, robots, the whole lot. Oh dear, really? I mean, I've only got two minutes left and I've only just got into my stride. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, uh, I'm sorry, but traditional knowledge actually very often tells us all we really need to know. And, it's, uh, and the new technologies that are, that are designed not to enhance the traditional technologies, which they should, but are designed, in fact, to sweep them aside. Now, to summarize in two minutes, if you go down the agroecological route and the route of economic democracy and all those other things, you finish up by a, system, a, a logic, which I haven't got time to describe, at the idea that actually you need farms that are low input which means actually more or less organic. You want them diverse, which means actually that they should be mixed, it means they should be skills intensive, which means they have to be vaguely small to medium sized. Now that is the precise opposite, the absolute opposite of what the modern neoliberal economy is forcing us towards, which is towards high high input agriculture, maximum, maximally technologized, dependent on oil, uh, minimum labor. In fact, some people would rather like to have no labor at all. And uh, bigger and bigger scale, and more and more central ownership. The exact opposite of what we should really be trying to achieve. And if we continue down the present route, frankly, we've had our chips. Whereas, if we seek to do what has been recommended, build on local enterprises, which must include local farms, especially organic farms, etc., etc., then we have some hope for the future. But only then. Thank you very much. <laughs>